And so I will conclude there and pass the baton to Martin Dreiling, who is now going to look at Peter Brutnib um, in mantle cell lymphoma. So Martin, take it away. Well, thank you very much. Um, I'm privileged to give you an overview about uh, two different presentations. The first one, uh, and that's just a follow-up, uh, and that's the result of pertobrutinib in mantle lymphoma. Um, these are my disclosures, and my major disclosure is that I'm coordinating the Initi uh, initiative against uh, bureaucracy in clinical trials. So if you need some additional information on that, just go to, on, uh, to our webpage, which is bureaucracyincts.eu, and you will find uh, more information on our manifesto. Okay, so we already touched on, on the outline of this study. Uh, uh, this is a study including patients with CLL as well as mantle cell lymphoma. The patients had to be treated previously with at least two prior lines. Uh, eco performance was rather reasonable as usual in these patients. And of course, there should have been active disease in need of uh, treatment. Endpoints, this is a phase one, phase two study, although a rather large one though to say, uh, was safety tolerability, uh, maximum tolerated dose, pharmacokinetics, and efficacy according to response rate, overall response rates, and duration of response. Now, you have already seen the, uh, this uh, outline and uh, I really would uh, like to make the point, this is huge phase one, phase two study. I think the largest I know with more than 600 patients, but that allows us to have also more, um, de uh, more detailed information on the different um, histologies. And I explicitly would like to refer to Montessor lymphoma, cohort of 134 patients ongoing to first researching at the time of analysis still um, 23. So we're left with 111. And what I really would like to emphasize that 90% of these patients, 100 patients, have been previously treated with BTK inhibitors. And we know that sp specifically these patients uh, display a real uh, dismal outcome. So let's have a closer look at uh, this patient population. I think this is a real life scenario. Median age is in the range of 70 years. Um, as expected, the majority of patients, three quarters are male patients. And as been expected in advanced relapse disease, the number of pleomorphic and blastoid uh, uh, variants rise up to in the range of uh, whatever 15, 20%. Median number of prior lines of therapy were three. And at that time, you know, there's little left what you can do for these patients because 90%, as mentioned previously, has previously received uh, BTK inhibitors. Of almost all of them have received an anti-CD20 antibody, mostly rituximab, um, chemotherapy. Uh, and you see on this uh, list to your right side, a couple of different things have been tried in these patients, lenalidomide, uh, B-cell 2 inhibitors, uh, bortezomib, and even CAR T cells in 5% of the patients. Also, some of these patients were pretreated with PF3K inhibitors, although these usually achieve only short-term remissions. And what's uh, uh, the reason for the 90% who previously did receive um, prior BTK inhibitors? Well, most of them were progressive disease as listed here, about 83% and only 17% were stopped because of toxicity. Okay, let's have a look at the results. Um, overall response rate is just slightly above 50%. Uh, and that's including 25% of CR and PR is 26%. So this is an even split. Um, what is important to realize that these are all the pretreated patients. If we have a look at the BTK naive patients, overall response rate goes up to 82%. And that's quite impressive, to be honest. That's higher than in prior lines with uh, BTK in, uh, with 
conventional, let's say, BTK inhibitors, covalent ones. And um, therefore, uh, also uh, the efficacy in CAR T pretreated cells is in the range of 50%. And stem cell pretreated uh, patients as well uh, above 50%. What is somewhat reassuring, um, we know that after BTK progression, these kind of diseases are very uh, aggressive. They're ex uh, essentially exploding. And therefore, this is the most important information. Median duration of response uh, is in the range of 80 months, uh, which is quite uh, impressive. Uh, and um, uh, for uh, it's fair to say that these are still early days, so this number might even extend in subsequent follow-up, as 60% of these patients are still ongoing. So here we are, what about um, toxicity? And it's fair to say, uh, if we're looking at uh, the grade three, four toxicities, you'll see here, all the numbers are next to nothing, except a slight neutropenia, but I can guarantee you this is significantly below uh, what you would expect for the quote so well uh, um, tolerated uh, bendamustine. So these drugs are extremely well tolerated and probably this one, the small number is here. This is the most informative one. Only 1% 1 of patients stopped uh, the compound permanently due to treatment related adverse events. So really an extreme low number. And that I think really, you know, this is an ongoing treatment tells you how well this compound is being tolerated. So in conclusion, in conclusion I think pirtobrotinib has shown promising efficacy in uh, uh, mantle patients with pretreated uh, mantle cell lymphoma. And, um, you know, with their response rate of higher than 80% in the patients not pre-treated with covalent um, uh, BTKs and 50%, you know, uh, essentially overcoming the resistance of uh, uh, conventional BTK inhibitors. I think the next question is obvious because that's the question, is it even better to use these non-covalent BTKI upfront. And that is currently being tested in a randomized trial, head-to-head -head comparison in the so-called Brune trial. This trial is ongoing and we're very much looking forward to the results of these.